This video will address the Jepson Taylor Hand Function Test, a standardized, norm based performance test. It assesses the effective use of hands in everyday activity, is representative of function, and provides objective measures for comparison. This assessment is appropriate for children and adults over five years of age. Populations tested could include stroke, brain injury, hand surgery, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. It's important to note that the norm samples come from 360 normal adults ages 20 to 96 years old and 26 with stable hand disorders. And for children, there were 66 normal subjects 6 to 19 years old and 20 children with stable hand disabilities. During the test, the subject sits at a table that's approximately 30 inches high and a chair approximately 18 inches high in a well-lit room. The standardized kit includes pen, stopwatch, paper, clipboard, index cards, coffee can, pennies, paper clips, bottle caps, kidney beans, a spoon, wooden, a wooden board, a C-clamp, wooden checkers, and tape. The test consists of seven tasks that are timed with standardized instructions and the non-dominant hand tested first. The tasks include writing a short sentence, simulated page turning, lifting small common objects, simulated feeding, stacking checkers, lifting large light objects, and lifting large heavy objects. Here's an example of the Jepson Taylor being administered. Hi Neil, my name is Jennifer. I'm going to be your occupational therapist today. Are you familiar with occupational therapy? I am. Okay, great. What have you heard about OT? They help people get better. Yeah, we do. We help people manage the tasks that they have to do every day a little bit better. And so I know that you have a, a hand injury that you've had for some time. Um, have you noticed that changing it the way that you do any activities? I've noticed a loss of sensation in my these three fingers. Okay, so today I'd like to do the Jepson Taylor hand function test with you. I know that's a big name, but it just has a series of things that we'll do. And we'll start with your non-dominant hand, so your left hand. Yes. Okay. So we'll start with your left hand, and then we'll do your right hand afterwards. And I think I've explained it a little bit to you. Do you have any questions? I do not. Okay. So before we start, do you require glasses for reading or contacts? I do require contacts. Are you wearing those? I am. Okay. So we're going to start. I'm going to have you take this pen in your left hand and arrange everything so that it's comfortable for you to write with your left hand. On the other side of this card is a sentence and when I turn the card over and say go, write the sentence as quickly and as clearly as you can using your left hand. Write, do not print. Do you understand? Yes. Ready? Yes. Go. All right, now repeat the same thing, sorry, only this time use your right hand. I'll give you a different sentence. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Go. Great. We're going to move on to the next part now. I can take those. Can I take this one? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to organize things a little bit here for you. Okay. Place your left hand on the table, please. When I say go, use your left hand to turn these cards over one at a time as quickly as you can, beginning with this one. You may turn them over in any way that you wish, and they do not need to be in a neat pattern when you finish. Do you understand? Yes. Ready? Yes. Go.
Okay, I'm just gonna arrange them again. Now I'll do the same thing with the right hand, beginning with this one. Ready? Yes. Go. Okay, I can take these from you. Place your left hand on the table, please. When I say go, use your left hand to pick up these objects one at a time and place them in the can as fast as you can, beginning with this one. Do you understand? Yes. Ready? Yes. Go. Okay. I'm going to set it up again. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with your right hand beginning here. Ready? Yes. You can move that chair all the way. Okay. Ready? Yes. Go. take this. I'm actually going to place the board on the table right now. So just give me a second to get that set up for us. Okay. This board helps us simulate um, feeding and moving items. Excuse me. And I've put tape here so we know how far away it is. Okay. I'm just going to clamp it down so it won't move on you. We're going to use the same can. Okay. So you'll take this teaspoon in your left hand. When I say go, use your left hand to pick up these beans one at a time with the teaspoon and place them in the can as fast as you can. Beginning with this one. Ready? Go. Now we'll do the same thing with your right hand, beginning here. Ready? Yes. Go. Okay. So I can take the spoon. Just gonna... Do you play checkers? I do. Place your left hand on the table, please. When I say go, use your left hand to stack these checkers on the board in front of you as fast as you can like this one on top of the other. You may begin with any checker. Do you understand? Yes. Ready? Yes. Go. Now the same thing with your right hand. Ready? Yes. Go. I'm going to trade your checkers out for some cans. Place your left hand on the table, please. 
When I say go, use your left hand to stand these cans on the board in front of you like this. Okay. Begin with this one. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Ready? Yes. Go. Now the same thing with the right hand, beginning here. Ready? Yes. Go. Now do the same thing with these heavier cans. Place your left hand on the table. When I say go, use your left hand to stand these boards, these cans on the board as fast as you can. Begin here. Do you understand? Yes. Ready? Yes. Go. Now do the same thing with your right hand beginning here. Ready? Yes. Go. Great. Okay, that completes the Jepson Taylor hand test. Do you have any questions? Nope. Okay, so I'm going to use these scores and look at how they compare to the norms of people who have done this test before. And then we can also use it when you come back to do a follow up too. Okay, thank you. It was great working with you today. Thank you. For each subtest, you can calculate a standard score by subtracting the mean time from the client's actual time and dividing the result by the standard deviation. For a standard score for writing with the non-dominant hand, you can see the actual time was 23.87 seconds, the mean time 32.3 seconds, and the standard deviation 11.8. Thus, the standard score was negative 0.71. Turn the sign around to make it easier to understand where the client is at. Here we see the scores for the patient you just saw. The non-dominant hand is in the green and the dominant hand is in the orange. Actual time, standard score, and a comparison to norms is included. According to how to calculate a standard score, common practice in statistics accepts normal limits as two standard deviations above and below the mean. Following this, standard scores from negative 2 to 2 are considered to be within normal limits. Therefore, the patient scored within normal limits for all things except lifting small common objects with the dominant hand, which he was below normal on and can be explained by his long-term median nerve injury. Now let's look at the reliability of the Jepson taylor hand function test. Test retest reliability has been established and ranges from 0.6 to 0.99 for adults with disabilities and 0.87 to 0.99 for children with disabilities. It's important to note that the range of scores was restricted in the normal population, so test retest reliability was only examined for patient groups. To improve the reliability, training test administrators would be a great step. This would help with the inter-rater reliability and the intra-rater reliability. Furthermore, a user-friendly scoring sheet would help keep track of the standard scores as well as the attained scores. Developing a standardized test manual would also help with the inter-rater reliability, the intra-rater reliability, and scoring. Let's move on to the validity of the jepson taylor hand function test. Discriminative validity and content validity have both been addressed. According to Asher, the discriminative ability of the test to determine various degrees of hand function within a sample of people with disabilities showed a wide range of mean scores among the patient sample. Furthermore, content validity was questioned by Mathewitz, who suggested the subtests are poor simulations of actual tests. To address validity, first of all, they could assess the ecological validity, compare with the gold standard, and provide follow-ups so we could see how it relates before and after, and if it is actually predictive. You could also perform the assessment in the home, where people are actually being functional. 
You could use a plate or a bowl instead of a board to scoop up real beans because this would be more realistic. And you could also have a raised portion of the board or a box to simulate placing items on a shelf, like with a heavy and light cans.